comes the magic spray. Let's watch football. Now everybody. Come on, everybody. We have a supporter striving onto the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Men in Blazer show, where this week we're getting down and dirty to look at some good old-fashioned sideline scraps. You've got to fight for your right to argy-bargy. And not just any argy-bargy, managerial argy-bargy. <laughs> Football's equivalent of my dad could beat up your dad, or in most cases, my dad could wag his finger angrily in your dad's face, push him a few times, and then pretend he's being held back by the fourth official. Grrr. And we're <laughs> steaming straight in with the most recent entry to this list. November 20th, 2021, Liverpool hosting Arsenal at Anfield when a stray Mane elbow on Tomiyasu caused Mikel Arteta's Lego hair to blow clear off into the Liverpool night sky. Arteta and Klopp do the rational thing and charge at one another. Teeth bared and nostrils are flaring. Jürgen blowing blasts of hot air across the fourth official in hopes of igniting some of the pomade Arteta's used to gussy up those brows. What is amazing about this fracas is the way they carry on from a distance. Medium range warfare, lobbing metaphysical hand grenades from one technical area to another. Everyone on both coaching staffs get involved. Some trying to play peacemaker, some trying to fan those flames. Both Klopp and Arteta threaten to charge each other again, <laughs> but it devolves into a lot of pointing. If fingers were ninja stars, the carnage would have been at levels known only to the final act of any Tarantino movie. In the end, both managers received a yellow card for their part in the dust-up. Although that Basque battle axe Arteta may have wished it was a red, because in the end, he was forced to stick around and witness a 4-0 beatdown. Klopp's mob unfurled after this throwdown. It appears testiness might run in the DNA of Arsenal managers. Our next entry on our list is a classic involving Mr Arsene Wenger, who butted heads with tiny dancer Alan Pardew. Let's go back to November 2006. Arsenal buzz just outside of the top four, while Pardew's West Ham dangle precariously over the relegation zone. And it looked set for a nil-nil draw until the dying minutes when an East London smash-and-grab goal from Marlon Harewood snatched the points for Super Al. Q Pardew Gasm. A huge win in the context of that season, without a doubt. And Pardew is hoisted aloft onto his assistant's shoulders like a salt and pepper head Stanley Cup. But when his feet meet terra firma again, he decides to give the big one to Arsene Wenger. Three fist pumps, the third, a complete masterclass. Now, Arsene took exception to that triple pump. Why? What did I do? Asked the man who just acted like the PBA's Pete Webber. Who do you think you are? I am! Oh, Wenger pushes him away. Pardew gives him a little more. They're separated, but Wenger sees through the final minute and tells Pardew off on the sideline. Fist bump me twice, shame on me, but fist bump me three times, shame on you. And at full time, as the Arsenal players carried out their own beefs with their opponents, Pardew <laughs> goes for the handshake and gets completely natty iced, not just by Arsene Wenger, but also by his assistant, Pat Rice. And Pardew is left hanging. And you know, if that was the violence we could see on the field, you can only imagine what was happening up there in the stands at West Ham. Next up, we've got the modern-day Mr West Ham, David Moyes, from all the <laughs> way back in his Everton days. Lots of fond memories there, Rog. This is certainly a fond memory. I blocked everything else out. Let's go back to the 2009-10 season. Moyes, possibly the least style-conscious man ever to walk the earth, locking antlers with one of the most in-vogue managers in global football. And I mean in-vogue, quite literally. Just look at that scarf. The tiny man attached to that giant scarf, none other than Italian Roberto Mancini, who joined newly moneyed Manchester City only a few months earlier. But this Manchester City was not yet the all-conquering robot overlord machine we now know. Back then, still the beta years, saw the sky blue MySpace era, and Everton pumped them that day, thanks to goals from tiny Tim Cahill and future Golden Gloves wannabe manager Mikel Arteta, who looked, well, 
Exactly the same. <laughs> In the dying embers of the game, Everton bashed a long clearance upfield that fell right into the arms of Maestro Moyes. But with a lead to hold and a substitute to send onto the field, Moyes clutches that ball close. Right away, though, he could smell that aqua de Santa Cologne coming his way. It's Roberto Mancini, and he wants that bloody ball back. Mancini gives Moyes a shove to steal the ball back and then it's on. A Premier League sideline suddenly feels as menacing as a Glasgow pub come closing time. Is Mancini still unaware he's about to square up to football Begbie? Still screaming, what's the matter you? Hey, hey. God and no respect. Hey. But even after he's had a taste and the two are separated, Mancini decides to go back for seconds, a choice which likely tipped the balance for the referee's decision to send both managers to the stands for the remaining few minutes of play, which, it must be said, was a little harsh on Moyes. But at least it gave him the chance to break out those crazy eyes one final time in the tunnel. His signature thousand-yard vacant stare. Good Lord, Mancini, you got off easy there, man. Few have looked into those Glaswegian retinas and escaped without turning to stone on the spot. Now to a clash between two absolute heavyweight <laughs> units, large men capable of doing real damage. We're going to January 2021 at Anfield for Klopp versus Deitch. The last two men I'd want behind me at a late night Liverpool chip shop when I just ordered the last Donner kebab in the place. Been there, done that. And the sheer mass of both men alone is enough to make me tinkle in my undies. And as Liverpool were coming into this one with their title defence faltering, Without a win in four, Klopp was a little salty as the first half wound down, knotted at nil. And just as he trotted toward the tunnel, a brouhaha ensued on the field. And as Robbie Brady gives Robbo a little home nation's hug, Klopp encounters Deitch in the tunnel and decides to give him what for. But this is Sean Deitch, Davo. A man who's rumoured to eat glass for kicks and take pool cues to the down belows just because he ain't backing down. He's not afraid of no clop. Fortunately for all of us, both men must have calculated the widespread global destruction any ginger on German physical altercation would have caused because the only damage in the second half was to Liverpool egos who saw an 83rd minute Ashley Barnes penalty end their 68 game home winning streak in the league, their title defence never really recovered. And finally, the main event, the WrestleMania of touchline tussles, less a one-off sideline scrap and more an instalment in the 100 Years' War. Jose Mourinho versus Arsene Wenger. This is a clash of ideologies between two men who, at the time, were the only managers not named Sir Alex to have won multiple Premier League titles. When Jose Mourinho first arrived at Chelsea back in 2004, it put a dagger in the Arsenalithic era, a blade that Jose took every opportunity to twist, even some nine years later during the second stint back at Chelsea. You know, he is a specialist in failure. Uh, I'm not... I'm not. And if you think that's petty, you should see what Mourinho wrote about Arsene in his slam book. It kicked off North Shore High School <laughs> style when Chelsea hosted Arsenal at the bridge on October 5th, 2014. An already spicy affair reached Sean Evans' levels of heat when Cro-Magnon man Gary Cahill hacked down cabaret pianist Alexis Sanchez. Bless. The professor flew into a rage that would have landed others on a permanent sabbatical. Arsene Wenger simply tries to go from A to B until someone confronts him, in his words, without any sign of welcome. It's hard to see Arsene as anything but the aggressor in this clash, like the bookish older brother tired of his cooler, more athletic, more popular younger sibling getting all the plaudits. He steams right into Moo's technical area with intent, like Lane Price fighting Peter Campbell. You and I are going to address that insult, you a grimy little pimp. As soon as I raise my hands, I warn you, it shall be too late to run. All the while, the big Lebowski looks on. The dude abides. The Alsatian assassin immediately tries to take advantage of his Sean Bradley-esque reach, but the pugnacious Portuguese counters by getting inside and working the body. And then a move that now belongs in the Gripple Grapple Hall of Fame, up there with Angela Lee's Twister submission, Steve Austin's Stone Cold Stunner, and the Purple Nurple, Jose Mourinho's tie flip. 
He could have killed Arsene Davo. Ultimately, a rather humanly ugly affair. But then again, who doesn't want to push Jose Mourinho? That tiny shove channeled the anger of millions of Premier League fans worldwide, plus some La Liga fans and Serie A fans and Premier League fans. For that, Arsene Wenger, we salute you, you professor of fisticuffs. Coming up, a gent who would not have had his shirt on for any of those altercations, <laughs> making his second appearance on the show, the one and only Matthew McConaughey. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.